We are creating this video for ourselves ahead of our trip from Ontario, Canada to Spring City, Pennsylvania, to the Pennhurst State School and Hospital, which was originally named the Eastern State Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic. It was opened in 1908 and closed in 1987. This by far was the most difficult research we have ever performed in our years of exploring historical sites and seeking paranormal experiences. Historically, society had a great misunderstanding of treating and supporting people with disabilities, how best to help those with intellectual, cognitive, and physical impairments. Today, society has grown significantly regarding ethically supporting those with disabilities. However, neglect and abuse continues in the care of people who are disabled. Penhurst represents an old concept, where people with disabilities were kept away from the public eye. Penhurst was its own self-sustained community for the care of children and adults with various types of disabilities. Since its opening, the consistent theme was corruption, abuse, neglect, and overcrowding. This video is not to dive deep into the treatments historically provided at Penhurst, but to know the names of some of the people who tragically perished. We have found over 300 obituaries of children and adults who died at Penhurst State School. The images you are seeing now while listening. We want to know the names of those who suffered traumatic deaths, staff who passed away on the property, and the deaths that occurred in the Schuylkill River which seems way too many to be simply coincidence. The names you are seeing of those who died at Penhurst does not represent the totality of deaths. That number is unknown. These are names of the Penhurst victims who had families that cared enough to publish an obituary. Many of the deceased had no family to collect their remains. Bodies were donated to science, to universities, and many buried on site. If you wish to learn more about the treatment people experience at Penhurst, please watch the videos linked in the description. In 1927, Harry Blocker, aged 17, of Franklin County. He was working with a group of friends and decided to run away to the powerhouse. The attendant ran after him and brought him back to the group. When the attendant's back was turned, he again slipped away and went back to the powerhouse. He accessed it through the pit of the coal conveyor. He was caught by the running conveyor and killed. No one was present during the accident. He was buried on the Penhurst grounds. 1934, Catherine D'Angelo strangled to death her roommate, Mary Provisano. Both were aged 30. Catherine was found standing over her body by an attendant. 1937, Eugene Statler, aged 15, died from a brain hemorrhage due to a beating he received from attendant William McGraw. This is known as the Boxing Glove Murder. Witness Kipe gave testimony. He went to the Elk Cottage to give McGraw a paper. He saw McGraw questioning Eugene Statler, Earl Schweffler, and Clarence Anderson about the theft of 95 cents from one of the other inmates. McGraw lined up the boys against the wall, took a pair of boxing gloves from the clothing tree. He hit Schreffler first. Anderson began to cry. McGraw then told Schreffler and Anderson to leave the room. Kipe stayed and witnessed McGraw hit Statler several times, his head hitting the wall. He fell to the ground and pleaded with McGraw to show him mercy. Schreffler collaborated this version of events in court. McGraw was charged with second degree murder, but was acquitted of the crime. 1938, Wanda Thomas, age 9, died from injuries due to accidentally falling off a chair. The death was probed from the state and county officials to determine if she had been pushed or if it was accidental. It was ruled accidental. 1949, Lawrence Kern, age 35. Lawrence died shortly after a beating. Autopsy showed that he did not die from the beating, but of cirrhosis of the liver. The mother saw his body. He was black and blue from head to foot. 1949, there was an article released speaking of 23 violent deaths at Penhurst in a six-year period. This includes fractured skulls, scalding, and suffocation. A 20-year-old patient scalded to death by hot water in a shower. A 16-year-old boy tried to climb the flagpole at sundown to take down the flag and fell. He died from his injury. A boy died slipping on a slippery floor. A 36-year-old fell into a tub of hot water during an epileptic seizure and died. 1952, Robert Briers, age 29. His father accused and charged that he was beaten to death. 
He reported that Robert's stomach appeared to have been kicked in with a pair of heavy boots. Autopsy revealed that he had a broken jaw, broken rib, and other superficial wounds, which occurred before his death. The autopsy determined he died of edema, which is fluid in the brain and lungs. Robert had a history of self-injurious behavior, falling out of his crib, accidents. He was obsessed with running. It is mentioned that his death may be from the shock of his injuries. The FBI got involved in this one, which Penhurst did not appreciate. Penhurst was held not responsible. 1956, Raymond Lee, age 22, died after he took a beating in a cottage at Penhurst. Autopsy showed that his death was not a result of the beating, but from a puncture of the intestine, which led to periotonitis, resulting in Raymond's death. Six days before his death, psychiatric aide Frederick Crazley was fired by Superintendent Phillips. It is alleged that Frederick encouraged several inmates to join in the beating of Lee in the cottage. After the beating, he was brought to the hospital building due to the vomiting spells. His abdomen was extremely bruised. It appeared he was recovering, but then he took a turn for the worse and died. 1960, Naomi Sensenik, age 22. She and two other girls were sunbathing pinned a sheet above them to block the sun. A spark from the incinerator caught the sheet on fire, resulting in the sheet falling on the girls igniting their clothing. Naomi died from her burns. The two other girls survived. 1965, Harry Dexter, age 29, attempted to escape by jumping on a plow truck that was plowing the roads at Penhurst. He slipped on the ice and ended up under the plow. He was still alive, taken to the infirmary, and died from his injuries the same day. 1968, John Stark Williams Grant died of pneumonia, as reported by autopsy. His mother charged, and this information came from a friend of John's, which the mother spoke to at Penhurst. The friend said, John died, fire. 1969, Anna Owen, age 49, died of a scalding. A motherly type of patient, a role described as a patient attendant, placed Anna in a bath with scalding hot water. Anna was severely burned and died the following day. There were five attendants assigned to the ward. None were present to observe this. Anna was a crib patient. Anna's mother, Margaret, made a statement that the accident was God's will and couldn't be avoided. Anna had polio. Maria Bondi, age 14, died after swallowing powdered detergent. An attendant noticed her bleeding from the mouth. She died at Pennsylvania University Hospital. Her parents lived in Alaska. It was mentioned that there was evidence that she was given the detergent to ingest by another inmate. 1938, Marjorie Greener, age 26, a patient at Penhurst State School since childhood, choked to death while eating breakfast in the institution. She was pronounced dead by the attending physician in the hospital. 1938, Robert Arter, age 28, who wandered away from the Penhurst State School, was killed by a freight train. Nineteen thirty seven, Warren Banghart, age forty five, attendant at Penhurst, died on duty of a heart attack. Nineteen forty four, Veronica Carey, age thirty two, a Penhurst dietary staff, died face down in her bathtub. She was found by a Penhurst dining room employee by the name of Martha Jacobs. The water was running, the toothbrush found in the bath next to her. She collapsed while brushing her teeth. Autopsy showed no sign of drowning. Her death is attributed to shock from a seizure. 1947, Edward J. Kennedy, an employee found lifeless in his bed at Penhurst State School. Death from a heart ailment. He was an employee for 11 years. 1949, John S. Eby, chief pharmacist, died at age 73 at Penhurst State School. No cause of death mentioned. He was prominent in Masonic circles and served in the First World War. 1951, Oscar Gumpert, age 54, a stationary engineer at Penhurst for the past eight years, an ex-policeman, found dead in his room at Penhurst State School. 1953, James Conahan, maintenance man at Penhurst, stricken ill at work, died in Penhurst State Hospital. 1963, Frederick Strobel, employee at Penhurst, died at work, no mention of position. 1969, Uriah Fox, age 47, died suddenly when working at Penhurst as a guard. 
He was a sergeant in the police force for 20 years. Lawrence Morris, employee of Penhurst, died after a fall at work in Penhurst Hospital. He was an employee for 20 years. Nineteen sixteen, Jacob Bublitz, age sixteen, drowned while escaping Penhurst. His father solicited money for the burial of the boy, but he spent the money on alcohol instead. Nineteen twenty one, Albert Pancake, age twenty one, drowned. Nineteen twenty seven, Charles Bird, age eighteen, and Benjamin Miller, age sixteen, drowned when attempting to escape in a rowboat. 1936, Clinton Reitner, age 50, drowned, but not a patient. He was found on the property. His death is a mystery. Nicholas Tutolo, age 15, drowned while bathing and swimming in the river. 1940, Metrolino, found floating in the river, drowned, was in the school for 30 years. 1943, inmate drowned, no name released, no body. Inmate assumed drowned. Later, Earl Welsh, age 31's body was found. 1947, Stephen O'Donovan, age 17, drowned, found nude floating in the river. He escaped Penhurst. 1947, William Kerlick, age 20, drowned after escaping. 1950, Harold Apple, or Attell, Age 17, drowned after wading into the water beyond his depth. 1955, Wilmer Green, age 17, stumbled while running and fell into the river and drowned. 1958, Gregory Falcon, age 12, drowned while escaping, was an inmate for six years. 1962, Richard Menser, age 29, drowned. Search for the body was called off. He was a patient for 11 years. 1965, John Evans, age 18, found drowned in the river by two swimmers. He was missing from Penhurst. 1971, Walter Calvin, age 24, was found by two young boys on a small island. He had drowned. He had only been at Penhurst for two months. 1976, Albert Carey, age 22, Drowned. 